Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercrest, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play. This time around, it is Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. I'm finally playing the original game after playing and beating the sequels with everything collected. And of course, I'm going to go complete 100 plus percent here as well. Very interesting game. One of the best games i ever grown up with. It was a cover story for the November 1994 issue of Video Games Magazine, which sadly sh shut its doors a couple of years later. And seeing that in the magazine, as well as gameplay footage on television for the game, made me really want to get this. And thankfully, eight-year-old me was not disappointed. Also, you had Sega Saturn and Sony PlayStation on the horizon. Those things had yet to show up on American Shores, so... At this point in time, you just had... Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis, and Game Boy, and Game Gear, as well as... Basically, those were your main four. And, of course, there was Nintendo, that was pretty much on its way out. It just had, like, a few more games left in it before they stopped... Before Nintendo stopped, uh... Supporting it in 1995, and I showed the uh, tile screen multiple times because of all these little nifty screen effects. And I'm going to go ahead and go go straight to the save select and start a one-player game. If you could not already tell, you do play as Donkey Kong, and of course Diddy is the one tagging along. We know how he performs in the, the second game, and he doesn't really perform that much differently in the first. I will be going over how Donkey moves, but he's basically just a slightly slower version of Diddy. Both characters are just about even. And we're already on the overworld map screen, and here's Congo Jungle. And we're going to start off the first stage, Jungle Hijinks, where I will take some time to mention some stuff. Gameplay mechanics-wise that, well, didn't really show up in the sequels. If you go all the way to this opening in the tree at the very beginning, you'll be in Kong's Banana Horde. Of course, it's empty. Story is, the Kremlings have taken all of Donkey Kong's bananas, and now he has to go out and get them back. Also, you can climb up into the treehouse here, and get this extra life. Red ones are worth one, green are worth two, blue are worth three. Also, you have to get on this tire. Just hold B. Once you're on one, and you will go higher than usual, and you can get that extra life. Also, Naughty. First enemy wheat in the game, and it is a beaver that just moves towards you. Also, we got these little green lizard guys that just move back and forth, sometimes off-platform, sometimes not. Those are the critters, and just like the Naughties, they just take one hit to kill. Also, I'm going to show off something that, well would late be made a little useful in the sequels as well. It's called the Super Jump. All you have to do, just run to the edge, rep cartwheel or roll, jump while you're in midair like that, and you can get one, two, three, and four extra lives. Also, if you hold down and Y while playing as Donkey Kong, you can get a hand slap attack, and if you pound the ground with it sometimes, you'll be able to get stuff. It's really useful. Matter of fact, these four mounds in particular, as well as some other places, will usually give you bunches of bananas worth 10 bananas each, and also extra lives in some places. Also, if you hit an enemy with this attack, one banana. Very useful. 
Also want to do it here too. No, not there. Somewhere down here. There we go. Also notice how the ground right there looks a little broken. If you jumped on it from a high enough distance, or elevation, or what have you, you can actually break that broken land and get what's underneath. In this case, it's a steel keg. Throwing works just like the other games. You can't hold up the throw up, though. That wouldn't happen until the sequels, I don't think. Let me see if I can do it with Diddy. Nope, you can only throw straight forward. It was a little simpler in this one. Throwing upwards didn't really debut until the second game. Also, Neki. Giant vulture that shoots uh, nuts at us. And those two fat guys that we ran into with the steel keg is, are, are called clumps. You can roll into them with either character, but you can only jump on them with Donkey. And they take one hit to kill. Also, if you run into that wall with Rombi or throw a barrel into it, you can enter that bonus area. You get a bunch of bananas and an extra life there. Also, there's a G. And once you, you'll end up right here when you complete the first bonus area. If you have Rombi, you can just break the wall underneath to get the second bonus area. I grabbed the token while I was fighting Neki, and that's what it looked like. If you collect three of them, you'll get to a bonus area where you collect tokens with the animal that the token signifies. One, two, three, four. There we go. As you can see, I've already gotten two of them. So we'll be seeing the third one soon enough, and we do, I'll show you off the little token minigame. Basically, you play the animal that is signified by that token, and you can go for some extra lives. Also, if you jump from that tree to that broken ground, you can get the barrel and then get in here with the barrel in case you don't have Rombi. Extra life! Nice. Sometimes they pop up, sometimes they don't. I think there's a trick to it that I'm not aware of. But let's go ahead and leave this area. We've already found both bonus areas, Era 2 and Jungle Hijinks, and they're at a random amount in every stage. It's always different depending on which stage you're in. That's what I meant to say. And the second stage is Ropey Rampage, where we'll meet some new enemies, as well as, well, see some rain. You didn't see anything like this, well, not very much in the sequels. And new enemy, Army. Goes down in one jump with Donkey, two with Diddy. There's a TNT barrel. There's the K. Also, sometimes I can get Donkey Kong to move while doing the hand, hand slap. Like, get him to move forward and then do the hand slap at the same time. I never understand how to do it, though. Also, can I do this? Yes, I can. If you can super jump all the way up here, you get three banana bunches. Which I'm pretty sure you're going to want. Another bunch up here. And none up there. Also, want to check between trees in these areas because there you go. More bunches. And I like doing a hand hand slap because you know you can always get a uh, banana here and there. Also, there's another bunch up top you can get with the hand slap. And here's a rope. Just jump into it and you'll just swing left and right. Also, a rombie token. Just hold forward and jump to jump forward off the rope if you need to. And I don't feel like grabbing that. Also, there's the O. Nothing there? Oh, there we go. What was that? Also, another extra life. Now, if you drop between these two trees, you'll land on the barrel cannon and you'll get the first bonus area. Good thing about the bonus areas is you're not collecting cram coins or bonus coins. You can take as much time as you want. There's no timer. And all you have to do to get credit for them is to enter them. Now, once you enter a bonus area, you can't enter it again until you either restart the stage or get an extra life. Or not get an extra life, but lose a life. 
And also some of them will contain the letters like this one did. This one at the end. And the, the, the bonus area system got fleshed out in the sequels, as I mentioned at the very beginning of the Let's Play. And I want to take care of that armadillo. Use a tire to get on top of this tree. And hit that broken earth to get that little frog token there. Also, zingers! They already fly around or read a patterns or just stay in one place. But they're just as annoying here as they are in the sequels. And you're probably wondering where the second bonus area is. Well, there it is. Right in that pit just before the arrow pointing right. Now here, you got another one where you're guessing where the extra light balloon is. Here? Yes, we do. We got it. And we're already up to 19 lives. I'm really liking that. Of course, it's going back to Randy, but we can just go all the way back to the right and just get it, get the weather to be good and wonderful and everything again. And I don't know why I'm hand slapping that. Let's go ahead and get out of here. And next up is Cranky's Cabin. Now here you'll meet Cranky Kong. He's supposed to be the grand the original Donkey Kong, and the Donkey Kong we're playing as is his grandson. He'll talk about the good old days, and he'll make fun of present-day gaming for 1994, present day. And he'll also make he'll make a reference to 64-bit gaming as well. He's basically the cranky old man who just wants you to get off his lawn. He also gives you pointers for the early parts of the game. He's supposed to give you points, pointers for like the area, the current world that you're in. But for some reason, it wasn't programmed right, and we didn't get to see all those hints until the game came out on a uh, Game Boy Advance. And so he's barely useful in uh, Super Nintendo version of the game. And there's really not much point in going to Cranky's Cabin anyway. Unless you really need the most basic of hints. So, I guess if you wanted to see Cranky for the sake of, see, sake of seeing Cranky, I guess you could go in there, but otherwise, meh. Anyway, next up is Ro R Reptile Rumble. Three bonus areas for this stage. New enemy, Slippa the Snake. He just slithers back and forth, and I want to not carry that barrel. Also, Blue Crushes. Not Blue Crushes, but Blue Critters. Those guys will just jump around. Also, if you send a barrel into this wall, bonus area, first of three. Don't forget to get this extra life. And there's nothing there that I can hand slap out of the ground. Oh, well. And I don't even know why I'm going back except maybe to jump these guys. Can I get him to show up again? Well, one of them I could. Can I jump the other guy just to be funny? No? Okay. Well, we can just continue on and get up here for some pin bananas. And the second bonus area is in this barrel cannon to the left. All you gotta do is just jump straight up. Doom, you've done it. Just a bunch of extra bananas. You can never have enough bananas or lives. And you definitely want to make sure you avoid these guys while you're taking them down. I believe this is the only step that has some extra bananas, if you need them. Also, you want to duck down so that these zingers don't hit you in case you want these bananas. There we go. I find it interesting that the level gets goes between light and dark in some sections. It's kind of weird. Anyway, we got another bunch of bananas below the midway point. No, 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 no. I want to save that for later. Yeah, there's another one just as I thought. I want to take care of these snakes first. And then set the barrel down here 
to get the third and last bonus area for this stage. Just get on top of this tire, leap onto the tire, and just get all these bananas, and then you can head out. And nothing there. And of course we got an on guard token. Yep, on guard was in this game just like he was in the sequels. Can I roll into all these guys at once? Nope. But we can get some free bananas. Sometimes I can get a one up out of there, sometimes I can't. And one more bunch for the road. Oh, I guess there is a pattern for getting an extra life with the hand slaps. Maybe you're supposed to do it ten times? I don't know. I'm going to find out and tell you guys in the next video if I find anything. But next up is Coral Capers. I would stop it here and leave this stage for the next video. There's just one problem, or rather a problem that would be a good problem to have. Underwater areas are really interesting, too, in the fact that they have no bonus areas. But time to show that off. As you can see, underwater areas are going to be all underwater all the time. You don't go between wet and dry land like you did the sequels. Also, these fish are enemies, and I forgot what their names are. Not even the player's guide tells me what their names are. Oh, well. There's a K. And there's a Croctopus. They always swim around in a separate, distinct pattern. And if you go to where that lone banana is and go down, you'll enter this little nook where you can get some free bananas. And I'm going to wait here so that this Croctopus will get out of my way and I can swim around and away from here at my leisure. Now, there's a banana arrow pointing downwards. And if you go to it, there's on guard. We finally got him. Also, I love the music here. Very ambient, very atmospheric. Also, you want to go all the way to the right there so you can get that extra life and get away from Croctopus. Also, it should not even be mentioned that you can just press Y to stab enemies with On Guard Sword Like Bill. There's the midpoint, another new enemy. Chomps Jr., a small, light blue shark that just moves around in a predetermined pattern. We'll see Chomps Sr. shortly, or uh, the game just calls him Chomps. Another Croctopus and another On Guard down there, but if you didn't look for the first one, you probably lurking, weren't looking through the level well enough. Also, you can always break those Donkey Kong barrels no matter what. Anyway, there's Chomps, just a larger shark variation of the shark enemy. Again, moves around a predetermined pattern. If you go th right through this wall, ah, we got our third ostrich token. I'm going to go ahead and show this guy off. This is Espresso the Ostrich. And you couldn't tell from looking around here. You can use them to fly, and you can use them to run pretty fast. I like it. He can't jump on enemies, though, probably because his legs are too thin. There is one kind of enemy he's invulnerable to, but we haven't seen him yet, and I will mention that when the time comes. For now, though, let's grab a bunch of tokens, try to make our way all the way to the end here. Go all the way over this wall, and there's a giant espresso token. This doubles the amount of tokens that you have, and you can, you can also grab the tokens to make up the little statement saying times two, you get even more before the game decides to double it for you. And I kind of wasted a little time, so I don't really have 600 like I wanted, but every 100 tokens you grab, you get an extra life, so we're doing pretty well in the uh, extra life department. Also, we're back at the midpoint. We seem to be stuck here. Oh, wow, this is what happens when you don't move down. Don't move up. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, I should have moved up. I am such a moron. Wow. Oh, man, I did not think this was even possible. I never even tried this as a kid. Oh! 
there we go. I was going to re restart this and then, you know, go back to this point, but hey, you can break out of that. What do you know? That was pretty weird. I'm glad I showed that off. That's the first time I ever did that. But yeah, if you do get caught in there with on guard when you start back up from the Espresso token game, just move up. Don't move down or any other direction, otherwise you'll do what I did. And you'll make a fool out of yourself and you'll try to try to get to that, go a little down to the left in order to break free. Also, there's the N. And hopefully they'll try not to lose on guard here. There's one more enemy to get. And, wow, that was a pretty good way to put some length on the video, let me tell you. That's not the enemy I was looking for. We've already seen him, but... There it is, Clambo. Stays in one spot. Always shoots one, two, or sometimes even five pearls. Sometimes three, four, or five in any specific directions. And it's always a fixed direction, too. Also, this guy, this Croctopus, moves around in the figure-eight pattern. He always heads to the right first. Also, there's a G, so we now have 32 lives. That was pretty hilarious. Also, no bonus areas. We've already completed the stage. Anyway, it's time for Funky's Flights. We might as well go ahead and show that off before we end the video here. And this is where Funky also debuted. This is where you start seeing the Kong's extended family, so to speak. This works just like it did in Donkey Kong Country 2. Get in the jumbo barrel, this nice little plane barrel, and you can go to any world you've already completed, any stage that you want, and it is free because the whole thing of banana coins hadn't really taken off yet, because those things didn't show up yet until the sequels, and you can go to any place you've already been, you can't go to any place you haven't been to yet. So you can just go straight to the overworld, to any world you want, and you can pick that world and head to wherever it is you want to go. And we'll be going to Barrel Cannon Canyon in the next video. This is where the game stops being super easy. It kind of drove me nuts as a kid because once you beat this, this stage, you'll be able to save your game. Yeah, you have to come close to the end of the first world to save your game. Gaming before 1996 was not very kind, let me tell you. And this one will be giving us quite the shock if we're not ready for it. But of course, like I said earlier, that's going to have to wait until the next video. So join me next time where I take on Barrel Cannon Canyon and finish off Congo Jungle. So until then, this is Prince Watercress. Take care. Stay safe and thanks for watching!